Welcome back everyone to another Company of Heroes 2 people cast. This time we're gonna have a free free on Anger Munde. Hmm. Anyway, the players in the south we have Mashav playing as the Overwatch OKW. 47, who of course sent in the replay. And Poncho. <laughs> Poncho, uh, who is playing as the Fortified Armor Wehrmacht. Their opponents are going to be Baddybot. Hey, Baddybot, how's it going? Remember him from a couple of Casco. Gary and Silent Breacher as all of the different allies. So we're going to have a triple threat coming in from the north, and it's all of the allies. Let's see how our German players can deal with them. All right, so 47, already going with some folks grand years. It looks like he's gonna try to go ahead and secure, of course, the central part of the map as his is uh, as it is his job, of course. He is the one closest to it. And uh, he's gonna start to send those Storm Pioneers right off the bat, very, very close. Wants to be uh, one step ahead of his opponents and get this building, of course, as Angry Munde. As you may know, uh, the center is sort of dominated by a couple of annoying buildings as well. In, in general, there's just a lot of buildings that are pretty good to take in the early game. As you can see, the British doing just pretty much the same thing and uh, forcing away these pioneers from Poncho. Uh, Poncho. And now, of course, he's got a commanding position over the south. So uh, very, very much a map that's focused on how you use buildings, how you use heavy cover that's scattered about pretty much all over the place. It is a very, very narrow map, not a lot of flanking opportunities, so less about maneuver and more about positioning. So, Sturm Pioneer is going to make some pretty good usage of their early game prowess, although um, they should be careful. There is one guy coming in with a Maxim. I'm not sure where the rest of the crew is. They're a little late right now, and uh, they're probably going to get some good shots in on these Sturm Pioneers, but what they don't know is that there's a Volksgrandier squad coming through from uh, the... Of course, wall over here. Thankfully for them, they're gonna get covered by this other machine gun, the Maxim, and uh, the you know folks trainers are gonna have to try to get a bit of a flanking maneuver off. But I, what I would do is just retreat at this point because. To be completely honest, even if these folks Grenadiers can get around the machine gun and get some shots in, yeah, the second machine gun is going to just suppress them and easily force them back. Here comes the nice pinning from the Maxims. Lots of suppression coming through from those machine guns, and they're going to have to escape. This is coupled with the fact that the South is falling through the Allies rather quickly. Poncho has gone with two machine guns, which is... Well, also a decent choice, I mean, considering how well it just worked out for Baddybot, you can see... It's not the worst idea ever, but considering that down here the Brits have been uh, doing a pretty good job capturing these buildings, yeah, these machine guns are working against the British or against the Germans rather than for them because it's just kind of uh, slowing them down and making it harder for the Germans to push in and attack the British forces than anything else, really. They do, however, manage to force away these. British troops. Um, the Brits don't really have much of a defense set up around the VP, but they do have a universal carrier coming in, so um, they're going to have a slight slight speed bump in the way of the German forces. Baddybot can get some combat engineers, of course, in the building, but right now it's not looking all that good for him, as these folks grandiers can probably blast these guys out of that building. And right now his machine guns are being flanked by some folks grandiers, uh, you know, in the sort of strategic point area and uh, I'm not quite sure what this Maxim is doing but it does manage to back itself up against the wall not enough though it does not get enough rounds in on those folks to burst them or suppress them or anything like that and so uh, the massacre is going to continue and the folks grenadiers are just hounding that poor crew to hell and back thankfully with three Maxims on the field Baddybot is in a perfect position to hold his side of Angermunde against any enemy forces fourth machine gun coming in so to be completely honest if I were 47 right now I would go with uh, the support gun but he does not have the support gun he's got of course mechanized regiment headquarters which means that with no battle headquarters yeah no more LEIGs coming in for a while he's gonna have though the Lukes so I'm guessing that's what he's going for, and right now it would be, well, it would be pretty good for him if he can get the Lukes, but he's going to need to be careful about anti-tank guns, which might be coming in soon. In the meantime, in the south, 
or no, sorry, actually in the west. In the west, we have the Folks Grandiers coming in from Mashav, trying to establish a forward base with that battle part quarters, not looking all that good for himself because, again, he's against the American. He's Silent Breacher. Silent Breacher does have the lieutenant, so he's going very, very aggressive on the early game, as the Americans should be, and he's putting up a lot of pressure against Mashav, who does not have the support of any of his teammates because, of course, uh, his teammates have things to deal with of their own, and right now it seems like those things are uh, going quite well, at least for 47. 47 can uh, push away these lovely machine guns that have been troubling him for the past, uh, you know, five or six minutes. Pushing them back to where they came from. Sorry, that was a little violent. A little bit of a violent outburst of voice. But yeah, um, so the center looks pretty good for the Germans, but the south is still under some kind of attack. We have the Wasp Carrier getting some very, very nasty flamethrower bursts on these German troops, wiping out a machine gun squad, wiping out a pioneer squad with those um, infantry sections that hopped into the building, and getting yet more damage off on them. Of course, the reinforcement bunker is trying its best to keep this pioneer squad alive, but eventually it's going to die to the Wasp Carrier, and uh, yeah, there goes that pioneer squad. Now the flamethrower is going to be stolen by uh, the infantry section. So there goes that wooden bunker to the flames of, um, you know, his, flames of his majesty and all of that. So that's looking pretty good for the Brits. So if the Germans had a good run in the center, they're looking pretty bad everywhere else. And to be completely honest, even the center is not looking all that good for them anymore. But the Lukes is coming in. And uh, yeah, the allies don't seem to be prepared at all for this uh, possibility. And right now, Badibot does not have any anti-tank guns. Does uh, Gary? No, he does not. Silent Breacher? No, of course, he went Lieutenant, so he's very vulnerable. So right now, their only hope are anti-tank grenades on their infantry. And, uh, of course, Badibot does not have any conscripts. The Brits don't have any anti-tank grenades. So the only hope right now for the Allies is that the Lux finds itself very, very near these riflemen or a mine. I don't see any mines, though, anywhere. So it's not looking all that good for them. And uh, the Lux is likely to do a lot of damage against these guys. In fact, it's going to go after the um, the Wasp Carrier first. That's a very good idea, actually. Because he does not want that Wasp Carrier to be annoying. And it's going to be a relatively easy target. But it gets away, so that's pretty good for it. But now the Lux is revealed and uh, it's angry. So it's going to start to chase down these Brits. Of course, the Brits, he knows that there's no, absolutely no danger coming in from the Brits because they don't have any tank grenades. So the Lukes at this point just needs to be aggressive. Make its presence felt on the battlefield. Do as much damage as possible before the Allies can get some kind of counter. Right now, the Allies have a triple cap going on the Germans. And so uh, the appearance of these two light vehicles, both the, uh, of course, Flak Half-Track and the Lukes, is a boon on their side. So if they can use this correctly, they can turn the entire game around on its head and make it very, very hard for the Allies to um, you know, continue having such an easy time. Right now, it seems like a company command post is being built by Gary. So, but Gary's going for the late game. He's really thinking ahead. Uh, he had a Bofors. He had a Bofors that he could build. Looks like he's going to get some mines, so that's good. He's responding well to this, Luke's. Not sure why he didn't go for the Bofors at some point or another. And also, he's going to pick uh, special weapons and get some anti-tank infantry sections. So, he's very, very much afraid of that, Luke's. And um, very much on the spot, getting the counters on the field. And I don't mind that. I don't mind his play at all. But unfortunately, his Bofors is going to be placed a little bit too late. Right now, it seems like the Pioneer squads will find out what is going on. And yeah, here comes the cancel. Very good. Right now, it seems like the center, though, it's not going to be going as well as um, as well as the Allies are hoping. Looks like the uh, um, the Soviets are just been completely wiped out, except for a couple of machine guns. We have do have though a Su-76 coming on the field. So the Allies, well, they had a bit of a bad moment over here. They're gonna start to get some counters out a little bit quicker than I anticipated them uh, anticipated them to be able to, and that's pretty great for them but still the Germans are gonna have an advantage that they didn't have before and so uh, things are looking a little bit better from the Germans that they were doing like five minutes ago or something of course uh, that's always kind of um, 
It kind of looks kind of depends on the fact that, uh, well, maybe this SC-76 is going to get destroyed. Maybe this Lux is going to get destroyed. Of course, the outcome of this, well, I mean, the SC-76 doesn't have an advantage, but it lacks infantry support. So the folk screeners can really screen out for that Lux. And the problem still is um, present for the Allies in the West. Of course, the American player still only has the Lieutenant and now the Major. So he doesn't really have any big counters to this flak half track except for bazookas which aren't enough to be completely honest so guys he's gonna need to find something else that he can do and then the south poncho decided to go for a stug nice skin but to be completely honest that's a mistake because he's not really facing any enemy vehicles he should have waited until he had enough resources out for a panzer 4 and wait a second where are his other buildings? Okay, I see what he was doing. <laughs> so he went and spammed pioneers and machine guns because he didn't want to waste, quote unquote, any resources on other things. I mean, uh, he was able to bring out a Stug very quickly on the field. That's still a pretty bad idea, though, because getting a Stug so early, it's like, what are you going to do with it? Shoot at infantry? Then you might as well get a Panzer IV. Just get a Panzer IV, man. And uh, yeah, the Stug is going to be relatively worthless. Seems like in the north we have a flanking attempt from, uh, of course, our OKW player 47. He's going to get in and do some damage against these riflemen. Perhaps, yeah, wipe them out. So that's pretty good. Unfortunately for the Germans, it seems like there's a bit of a float problem. At least for 47. Yeah, 47 is floating quite a bit. So he's going to need to find some way to use his manpower. And to be honest, oh no... Well, now he has another way to use his manpower. He can he can get that full screen use squad. He can purchase it once again. And um, yeah, what I was about to say is that he does not have the battle particulars, so no support guns. So really his only options for using his manpower are Rakan buffers and machine guns. And to be completely honest, one machine gun one be, would be doing quite well. In, in, in this building it would do very, very well, in fact. It would have a commanding view over the center. It would help out in, um, you know, dealing with all of these Soviet infantry units. It would help out in covering the VP and uh, preventing them from capturing it. It would also help out in covering the anti-tank gun, the Rankenwerfer, which he should get, to be completely honest, just to help against the SU-76M and as a precaution for later game allied armor that is surely to come out. And what is going on over here? We have fortified armor being uh, put into good use, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Here comes a Stuka barrage from 47. Misses almost everything. Ostwind is coming in. Not sure that that's the best idea ever. All right. So the allies are once again pushing in. Except for the north. We have this glorious flak half track doing its basically its darnest to prevent the allies from getting an upper hand in the north. But the south is really where things are not looking good for our uh, German players. It is where this <laughs> this hull down Stug is going to try to stop that Cromwell. Of course, with the hull down, I mean, it's going to have a pretty nasty rate of fire. But we have some good damage coming in on the Ostwin, thanks to the support of the anti tank gun and the anti tank grenades. So, Ostwin not looking too good, and uh, right now it's in trouble. There is a lot of. Uh, a lot of British units covering this whole area, so it's going to make it relatively difficult for the Austin to get out. And right now, there's also a bit of a push attempt from the Soviets coming in to the flank, getting some damage off on that fuel cache. Thankfully, uh, we have uh, 47 on the job with his folks grenadiers. He's going to flank around and, uh, well, rather prevent the flank from the guards. And finally, the Cromwell can get in and destroy the Austin. Finally, also, the Stug is going to get out of that um, hold down position. Which, to be completely honest, in a assault gun, uh, yeah, it's just not that good. Stug is going to be aggressive, chases after the Cromwell, gets a shot in, but it's not going to be enough to kill it. And uh, at least it gets the kill on the Wasp vet free. However, it's still not really going to be able to do anything because... Well, what is it going to do? There's infantry over here. It does not have really infantry uh, killing capabilities. In the north, yeah, it looks like the Axis were pushing in very nicely. It's nice to be aggressive right now, but a Sherman 
follows through and the Sherman, well, it's gonna force back all the Axis infantry, of course. RN, uh, only that Rakenwerfer and the support gun, and of course the flak are just preventing the Alice from steamrolling through all the way to the Schwer Panzer quarters, which has now just been built by Mashav. Mashav, which is the Overwatch Doctrine, so he can get some Goliaths. Strangely enough, he hasn't. No surprises there. And um, I wonder what he's going to use the Overwatch Doctrine for, though, uh, rather than Goliaths, because the Goliaths really are the main thing. Here comes a T-70 at 15 minutes. That's a bad idea. Should have gone with a T-34-76 from the Tier 4, or a, I don't know, Kashusha. And that's not very good, of course, so the T-70 does go down, predictably. Too many counters around at this point, so should not have gone th th with that. Stug right now has taken some damage, and its engine is uh, not working. But, I mean, I don't really see how the Allies can push in and deal with it. Although, the Su-76 is around, and there's more anti-tank grenades and more anti-tank rifles than the Axis would rather like there to be. In fact, Stug does pop smoke... Here comes a Stuka Barrage in the center, kills a Mortar. And the Su-76, instead of just attack rounding, instead of just using attack round, it decides to push through and die. But thankfully the Cromwell is pushing in. I'm not sure what the Cromwell is doing though. What is the Cromwell doing? What is it shooting at? It's shooting at the bunker for some reason. And here comes the boys' AT rifles. Finally, finally putting that Stug out of their misery, or out of his misery. But now another one comes to take its place. Of course, um... One Stug gets the gun, the other gets the ammunition. Once the first Stug dies, the second one runs and takes up the gun and shoots. And, uh, yeah. That's not gonna be offering any help or relief to Poncho. Right now, he's being pushed all the way back to the base. And, in fact, we have a triple team from the Allies coming in down here against them. Also, some pressure coming through against 47's position. The uh, Lux is actually still alive, but these riflemen will get a nice ambush off on it. There's a bazooka on the lieutenant doing some damage. They should probably just get in this building and then get out the other side and um, get an anti-tank grenade on that on that Lux. That would be devastating. Looks like the Sherman is trying to push through, but the Stug getting a, uh, you know, getting a bit of a payback over here for his friend, killing that Sherman rather easily. But that was because the Sherman overextended, not because of any, like, gloriousness of the Stug itself. Poncho, in fact, so loves the Stugs that he gets a second one. Oh god, I'm not quite sure on that. And right now, yeah, the two Stukas are still around. I'm not quite sure what these Germans really are thinking, though, right now, because they need to find some way to push in and be aggressive against their enemies. Because right now it is the allies that have the map control lead, and it is the allies that have the VP lead as well. So it's going to be, the ball in the ger is in the Germans' court. It's their time to act and um, try to throw them back. And they're not doing that as much as they should be. Except uh, Mashav. Mashav is being relatively aggressive, but he's also the only one that has his side under lockdown. So perhaps, instead of continuing to push on his side, he should have come in and helped out his friends who are being right now kind of triple teamed when they're only two. So yeah, it's not looking all that good for the Germans either way. Oh no, Cromwell, don't do this to me. Not sure what this Cromwell is doing and I'm not sure what this Centaur is supposed to represent. Um, I'm not sure if the Centaur is a good idea. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's a terrible idea. At this point in the game, 18 minutes, I mean, the T-70 was already too late, but the Centaur is also a little bit too late. Although, if the Centaur is careful, it can be used as an anti-air weapon. And uh, it can also do some nice light anti infantry support. Oh no. Decent placement of this machine gun. To be completely honest, I would have never expected this machine gun to be good. But it does work together and uh, punish the Zalad infantry that were trying to come in and destroy the Stug. And at least they were able to get the kill on that 276. Okay, it looks like the Flak Aftrak is still around and uh, doing its own thing. Mashab went for a P4. And now he has all the buildings set up 
and upgraded. So I think that he's gonna go for a uh, KT right now. The Centaur tries to come in and actually does quite a bit of damage with its first burst on the Luke's. Second burst though does not penetrate, so the Luke's is gonna escape out of there. Uns well, not really unscathed, but mostly unscathed. Panzer IV pushes up and tries to deal with the uh, Sherman, which is going to be rather easy considering it's supported by two anti tank guns. Rakenriffer is doing a nice, nice job. Once again, that is why you support your vehicles with Rakenriffer. That is why you support your units with support weapons at all. And uh, right now, riflemen are never going to be enough to deal with this nice assemblement of German just combined arms. You have infantry, you have light anti-infantry vehicles, you have tanks, you have anti-tank guns, you have the support gun, so you have the artillery. Just a very, very nice usage of combined arms, whereas the allies don't really seem to be shining, at least in the north in that regard. In the center, things are going a little bit better for them with their centaur, of course. And at this point, now that the Germans know that that centaur is there, I would be uh, thinking about some ways to defeat that. Of course, 47 is going more for the supportive role. And... Um, that seems to be a mistake because, yeah, sure, it can be a good idea to go with a lot of supportive units, such as, of course, the Stukas. Why is he going for a Jagdpanzer? I mean, you are the elite armored doctrine, so I was expecting him to go with the Sturm Tiger at this point. The Sturm Tiger would provide more of what he already has, but in a better fashion. Like, of course, Stukas, pretty decent artillery. But if you never really have a good artillery target, the artillery can be clumsy and worthless. Whereas the Sturm Tiger, I mean, you can just walk it up to something and delete it. So that's what I thought he would have gone for. Instead, he has decided to go with a Jagdpanzer IV, which is something his allies have. I mean, anti-tank, tank destroyers. It's like... Yeah, these things are already around, and right now, they're about to get bombed by something. What was that? Oh! Okay, that's the um, Special Weapons Artillery, the Concentrated Fire Operation. So pretty nasty damage coming in against the German vehicles, forcing them to retreat, and the Stukas trying to, trying to get some kills on the British infantry are going to fail miserably. Of course, Guards Riflemen are going to be able to f fend off that Lux rather easily. In fact, the Lux is likely going to die if it doesn't run away as quickly as possible. Yeah, gets a bit of a round in, but it only plinks and doesn't kill. Here comes some... Is that a Airborne? Yeah, P-47 Rocket Strafe. Not sure if that's a good doctrinal pick for Silent Breacher. He already had a lot of infantry. He didn't need Airborne. To be completely honest, and uh, in the late game, it's only going to provide him with the P-47 rocket strafe and the ability to pair drop AT guns without building the captain, which, to be fair, is a very, very good thing. But he hasn't done that yet, which is a bad idea. And he's going for a Jackson, which means that he kind of understands what is happening. And uh, what is happening is the fact that the Germans are slowly but surely building up more and more armor. In fact, oh, second P-4 for Masha. Not... Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't... I don't really think that that's a good idea. Because going for the KT would have been just so much better for him. Like, in fact, if he hadn't gone for that P4, which is like 130, right? 140. Uh, if he hadn't gone for that, he would already be at 240, so he would be a lot closer to that KT. And since he built all the buildings anyway, I mean, that would be pretty useful. Anyway, it seems like the Command Panzer was what Poncho was really missing out of his whole, uh, his whole uh, setup. And right now the Command Panzer is what is allowing him to deal with that British infantry. The problem, is, of course, is still uh, the fact that there's a few AT sections, so he needs to be more careful about this, and he perhaps is. And right now, these Stugs, while fine, yeah, they're gonna have a decently worthy enemy in the face of the Firefly. Of course, two Stugs are gonna pretty much beat one Firefly, I think, every time. But these Stugs are not supported by infantry, whereas the British armor will be, so. Axis pushing once again in the center. 
T34 around and uh, we have a couple of you know damage charges coming in from Batty Bot. Damage charges don't work after the last patch, they're just bad. And so right now that's not gonna do anything. So Germans on the move, pushing in and uh, doing their doing their bidding to try to capture these points. Unfortunately, yeah, as you can see, these Stugs, the problem is this, these infantry squads are coming in and they're, they have no defense against it. Like, they can sure shoot at the Sherman Firefly, but what is that going to accomplish? Yeah, sure, the Sherman Firefly might take some damage and run away. Oh, no, uh, but the Panzer IV Command Tank is taking some damage. One of the Stugs is taking yet more damage, and with this, you know... PTRS fire, they're gonna go down. T3485 tries to flank up north. It looks like one of the Panzer Fours is damaged, but that's still not gonna be enough to uh, make that force weak enough to be defeated by one single T3485. Yak Panzer IV, I'm not sure what it's doing over there. Um, should probably turn around and fire at this Jackson or at this T34. In fact, the Panzer, Panzer, II Alpha, uh, Panzer II Alpha L Lukes. It's not having the best of times either against those guys. So Germans losing both of their Stugs in the south, big loss. And uh, in the center and north, things are going much better for them. But still, they're going to need to find some way to get one of these points in a permanent way. They're down to 178 VPs. And if they can't get some VPs, well, I mean... The allies are going to really realize what is going wrong for them rather soon, I think, and start to concentrate their forces onto the center and the south and just kind of ignore the north and make sure that Mashav isn't really that big of a factor because he seems to be the type that just kind of pushes in to his side, not really caring about any of the other sides of the map. And that's a pretty major weakness that the allies should honestly make use of. Nice Stuka Barrage gonna wipe out two guards, rifleman squads, almost wipe out a third one. So that was a great little uh, Stuka Barrage. Of course, making use of the fact that these allies play ally players are being very, very blobby. So that was a good little kill. Another Yak Panzer was coming through for 47, but he's out of cop cap. He's actually got six Folks Grenadiers. Uh, <laughs> not sure about that. To be completely honest, I would have liked him to go with some support weapons as well, especially some Rakenwerfers to help deal with these allied tank destroyers and all of that. And then get some medium tanks or a Sturmtiger. Why not Sturmtiger, man? I would have, I would have enjoyed to see a Sturmtiger. Because once again, I feel like getting more Yacht Panzers does not really give the team anything they don't have right now. And tank destroyers is something that they do have. Medium tanks, they don't have that many of, so a Panther might not be the worst idea. But Sturm Tigers, they definitely don't have any. So <laughs> Sturm Tiger is always a nice little addition. And right now, it seems like the Folks Grandiers are being kind of massacred. But here comes the B4s, counterattacking against the unknown though, and well, what they knew was that the Jackson was there, so that was definitely a mistake. Easily fended off, of course, by the Jackson. And uh, here comes a rocket strafe, but unfortunately for our good allied uh, players, I don't think it's going to do all that much. In fact, one of them gets shot down by the still around flak half track, an Optivit 5. So that plane is not going to really get anything else done anymore. Stukatsufus is a little bit in trouble, but the Jackson pushes up alone without much support. In fact, only one airborne squad, and it takes a nasty beating to the face by all these German guns that were lying in wait. And the T-3485 pushes in. Not going to really do anything. Not going to really do anything. Hmm. 
So in the south we have a yet another push attempt from Poncho, but this was ill-advised. He didn't really seem to have that much scouting going on of what was going on here. Of course, taking massive damage from the Sherman Firefly, but also from the boys' AT rifle sections. And with the command pans are gone, once again his whole like army falls basically like a house of cards. Because he just lacks the anti-infantry. He's facing an opponent with five infantry sections and two uh, royal engineers. And he's just not getting any anti-infantry, which is a major, major mistake. I don't know why he's doing this to himself. So he gets another command tank, but he needs to be more, more conservative with the usage of his vehicles. He needs to keep them alive more. He needs to get some veterancy on them. He needs to get some extra anti-infantry. Why going with so many stugs when you don't need them? At this point, he would have been better served to go with some Panzer IVs and spam out those and try to, well, catch these Fireflies off guard rather than, uh, you know, just kind of sh shut them off with, um, you know, have a face-off with the Stugs. And uh, the face-off is not really working out all that well for him. Of course, partially because of the lack of anti-infantry, partially because, again, it's Fireflies, so they're strong anyway. So it's just better to, I guess, uh, throw in your lot with the surprise factor. Try to get some Panzer IVs. Try to use buildings for cover, get in close to the Fireflies. At close range, the Firefly and the P4 are not really going to have that much of a difference between each other. Uh, they're probably going to kill each other, in fact, in an engagement more often than not. And if you can get multiple Panzer IVs, you can really surprise Fireflies at close range with their DPS. Overall, it would just help out so much for uh, Poentro to kind of reduce his micro load by, you know, not getting so many tank destroyers out anymore and trying to get something that can be used in a versatile way. Anyway, uh, speaking of versatile ways, we have, of course, Masha with the KT. Finally, you can get that KT off on the field, and the center of the map is, well, a prime target to. Well, prime. Prime place, sorry, to put that KT in, plop it down, use it with the conjunction, of course, of the Yacht Panzer and uh, these two Panzer IVs. Nicely, at least, the Germans up here have some minesweepers and engineers to take care of their vehicles, unlike uh, what is happening for Poncho in the south. And that's, of course, meaning that less losses are happening. Right now, it looks like one of the Stugs died dead once again. SU-85 goes down to the fire of uh, those tank destroyers and the KT. Stuka does some damage, of course, but it's not going to be that great. And now, if the Allies can get, or, sorry, for the Axis can get in some infantry support to these tanks, this is going to be the push of a lifetime. I don't see how the Allies are going to stop this, unless once again these Axis infantry units don't come in and support. Of course, I can understand for 47, he does not have the infantry. But where is Mashup's infantry? He's got three squads that are kind of idle right now, not really doing anything. So that's pretty bad for him. It's allowing these Jacksons and uh, Fireflies and all of that to just kind of use their infantry as cover, as a screen, and get some line of sight for them and fire from maximum range. Of course, the German steamroller is just so strong over here that it's not enough. There goes the Jackson. T-3485 most likely also will go down to the heat rounds of these Yacht Panzers. And right now, if the steamroller comes down, it can probably destroy these two Fireflies. I wonder what they're going to do, though, as right now they're being attacked by aircraft. And um, they don't have the AA gun nearby, although they do manage to get it. Vet 5, P4 around. Centaur takes a nasty, nasty Panzerfaust to the face. Of course, this could mean it's, well, demise. It's going to die, most likely. Jagdpanzer tries to come in and help against these uh, Fireflies, but it actually shows its rear armor to the Jackson, so the Jackson is going to have an excellent opportunity to kill it. Is it going to take it, though? It's not in the best of positions to do that. There's a lot of debris in the way. It will kill it, along with the support of the boys' AT rifles. Looks like the Centaur has died. Not the best trade, losing a Yacht Panzer for a Boys H Rifle. In fact, one of the Panzer IVs will go down as well. That was actually the Veteran C5 one. So the Veteran C5 Panzer IV is dead. The other Yacht Panzer also dead. Amazing, amazing play from the Allies. Getting a nice counterattack in with the support of the aircraft. And um, making use of the fact that the enemies did not have the infantry support at the right time. Using their massive advantage in terms of anti-tank infantry with the Boys AT Rifles to uh, good effect and destroying 
and immobilizing a lot of German vehicles with those boys that he rifles. Right now, even the KT, even the mighty KT has to run away like a dog against the S-85 because the S-85 just has the superior range and um, these guards riflemen are giving it line of sight although finally the German infantry is around they do manage to wipe out all of the guards and get a Panzerfaust off on that S-85 S-85 which is now in trouble it's gonna eat damage from the KT and the P4 of course not that great here comes a sector assault not sure that's the best idea. Um, anyway, because of the loss of those two Yak Panzers, though, 47 can get out a KT. So, um, out of one big loss, another big win for the Axis. Now they have two KTs. The biggest loss probably was that Veteran C5 P4. That's probably never coming back. It was, well, a lot of work to get that P4 in shape and ready to go um, so right now it's not looking all that good for them having lost that right now yeah we're gonna see if the KT can do its own thing KT with the double uh, <laughs> with the double I guess um, you know double KT the Germans need to find some way to get their infantry and support their heavy tanks. And if they can support their heavy tanks, I mean, Battybot is down to nothing. I'm pretty sure that the British player is uh, somewhere close to that. Oh, no, he's actually got quite a bit. But Silent Breacher, yeah, he's got two Jacksons. And there are two, um, whatchamacallit-thems, two Fireflies. But the Fireflies, if um, Poncho makes a bit of a comeback, are going to have... Well, their attention somewhat distracted by the south. So to be honest, the two KTs plus some supporting vehicles would be lo would be going very, very well for the Germans. And to be honest with the amount of tank destroyers that the Allies have on the field, perhaps going for some Panthers might not be the worst idea to support their KTs. Just to get that extra bit of speed and maneuverability in. To chase down those tank destroyers, of course right now Masha Vent 47 can't do that because they are at full pop cap most likely. 47 most likely cannot get a panther and Masha also cannot get a panther as these are 18 pop cap units. So, evil. Anyway, what is Poetra doing? I have no idea. Let's speed it up a little bit. But yes, uh, right now the problem, main problem with the Germans really is that combined arms usage, which is lacking. And the main problem for the Allies is, well, partially the team coordination, although that's the problem for the Germans as well. The biggest problem for the Allies, I guess you would say, is uh, the fact that they seem to have lost all of their support weapons, so they can't really capture and hold any points. They don't have any anti-tank guns around. Which is surprising considering the amount of German tanks and tank destroyers on the field. So to be honest, a couple of AT guns, even a 17-pounder might be of, well, very, very good help against, of course, the KT Tide. Because tank destroyers are all fine and dandy, but once the Germans get in close, into their face, the tank destroyers can't do anything because the Germans are never going to really miss. And so the tank destroyers with their low armor are not going to last long. So right now, as you can see, the Axis push up, the one anti tank gun is not going to be enough to stop this veritable horde of German armor. And uh, one of the SUs dies because of it. The other Jacksons are having to run away. And right now, as I said, the attention of the Fireflies is a little bit distracted by the South. They do kill one of the Ostwins, but I mean an Ostwin for an SU-85 and a great push. I would say that the uh, I'm going to take the SU-85 and the great push over the Ostwin kill any day. So the Germans starting to climb and claw back into this game. Once again, they need to find some way to permanently hold and capture these VPs. If the Allies, well, had, um, I guess you could say, the presence of mind to just camp all their units in the center and the south, I think that they would at least have the VP superiority. And, um, well, they would have an exposed flank, but they would at least have VPs. Whereas right now, it seems like the Axis is taking the lead when it comes to VPs as well. Because in terms of overall forces, the Axis are ahead. Uh, right now, Battybot especially just does not have anything. So the Allies are almost down one player, essentially. 
even though uh, Poncho is also having some problems of his own. He's not as um, he's not as down as Battybot is. So Axis with an advantage in terms of numbers of units, with an advantage in terms of quality of units. Of course, if the fight is equal and even and fair, they're gonna lose the allies. So yeah, they need to find some way to be sneaky. They need to find some way to be campy and get some, you know, get their units into the center, get their units into the south, and all of that, and all of that. That's what I would do if I were them. A booby trap. Not sure what this A half track is supposed to do. I guess they're a little bit afraid of the airstrikes, but I feel like it's a bit of a waste of fuel, manpower, a bit of a waste of pop cap as well. If I were Silent Breacher, I would have used my manpower in another Jackson because at this point you see what these Germans are doing. There's a lot of armor coming in and even if they get some kind of AT, like the Jacksons are just going to be useful. Even in a defensive role. Don't even need to expose them to enemy AT fire. And the allies have also lost most of their infantry. So it's not looking good for them on that front either. Especially 47 has a healthy infantry force. If I recall correctly, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. If I recall correctly, although, wow, the minimap size is much greater on the other HUD side, on the other HUD, so that's actually relatively useful. Anyway, uh, the Marshav player over here also has a relatively healthy infantry force, but once again, he's not bringing it in to support his armor for some reason, which is allowing these Jacksons to get at least some successes off on the German tanks. In fact, one of the P4s does die. So imagine if there were infantry present here to screen away the Santa tank gun. I feel like it would be I feel like it would be useful for him. And the KTs especially need the extra support. I mean they may be very, very strong, they may be getting a lot of kills, but they need the infantry support. Where is the infantry? I know I do not know. Nowhere it seems. Luke's is still around, and uh, it's got thirty free kills, and it's gotten that uh, suppression, right? No, it's actually a veteran C5, right? So it's almost gonna have that suppression, and of course, once it gets that, it's gonna be a mobile machine gun. Very strong. Anyway, Centaur moves in. Not the most, not the most friendly push ever, but it does kill some pioneers, at least. And um, yeah, the Fireflies finally realizing that south, well, they, there's nothing that they really need to do down there, so they're gonna push into the center, and they're gonna try to help out there. And it's working fine for them. One of the KTs is taking a lot of damage. Heat shells issued, but, well, I mean, the KT, uh, the biggest problem right now for him is that he's taking damage. Oh no, oh no, he shows the rear armor to the Fireflies. He does a 360 for unknown reasons, and that's gonna mean the end of that KT. In fact, it's abandoned. I'm not sure if these Fireflies will try to destroy it or something, but here comes the Panzer IV. Almost looked like he were trying to ram the the Fireflies, but of course, just does a little bit of damage, screens them away. He's up to Vet 5 once again, 52 kills. Damn, that's an insane amount. But the Panzerfausts are coming and they're falling like rain on those Fireflies. So one of the Fireflies is dead. I'm not sure why it's lagging so much, but it is. Su-85 comes in and approaches, most likely to get the finishing blow on this KT. And, um, well, it's gonna get spotted by the Flak Aftrak. 29 kill Flak Aftrak is still around, and, uh, the 29 kill Flak Aftrak is gonna die. Kill this KT! Kill this KT! No! No, the Su-85 is gonna die without killing the KT! Oh my god. No, the KT is still alive. Here comes something. Is that a, that is a, uh, sorry, concentrated fire operation. So actually with the help of the ZIS free field gun, there was no need for the concentrated fire operation, but still that was, uh, 
a little bit of a suspense moment. Anyway, uh, the Vet 5P4 and the other Vet 2 KT are still alive. I wonder if 47 is gonna replace it with another KT. He will. So that's the whole kind of definition of um, when you have reserves of resources. And it doesn't really matter if you lose a unit in a even even in an even trade or on slightly unfavorable trade. It's not that bad because you can just replace the unit and the enemies cannot. So that's attrition. And uh, it's working in the favor of the Axis right now. Because the Allies lost a Firefly, they lost two Jacksons. One, in fact. One Jackson and one SU-85 in that whole engagement, whereas the Germans only lost a KT, quote-unquote, only. And um, the Germans also gained some map control to boot. Um, so that's, of course, quite good. Right now there's a triple cap going, and so, of course, the Germans are in a pretty good position to bleed the Allies dry. In the south, finally, Machine Gun is doing its own job. Looks like Poncho never built an infantry company, so he never built Grenadiers. I can start to see why he's having so many problems. And right now the paratroopers are trying to do their own thing, but yeah, it's likely that they're not going to have an easy time of it. So the center is going to go back to the Germans. The south is firmly German, and the north has been German as, uh, well, as long as anyone can remember. So, except for this T-70 being a derp, I really don't see... Whoa, there's an elephant. Except for the T-70 being a derp and the P-47s coming in, I don't really see what the Allies are well, really hoping to accomplish. And right now, yeah, here comes the massive Panzerfaust blob from, of course, um, 47. This is relatively dangerous. You're going to take some damage in doing this. I would have stayed here and captured the VP. He does actually capture the VP, and uh, at this point he kills the T-70. In the east, the fight between the tanks is uh, going the Alice's way, actually, because of the support of the P-47s. But finally, the P-47s are shut down by the Ostwind. And uh, <laughs> the Elephant Tank Destroyer right now is being given the uh, fortifications. Hold down mode. Interesting choice. And at this point, I think that it's going to be over. So, allies, mistakes. Things they could have improved. Well... I mean, I already said that they kind of treated the game as free 1v1s. At the end, they kind of remedied that, but it was a little bit too late. Perhaps they should have concentrated to the center and the south. The south was particular because we had Gary just really smashing Poncho, but he never really made anything out of it. He just kept just kind of blindly coming in and um, smashing Poncho, whereas... Mashav, who had very much the same thing happen to him in the early game in North, he at some point decided, oh hey, I'm gonna come in and help out my ally, and he had some pretty good success at that. The Germans just played well with their units that they had at the time that they needed, and um, the allies couldn't really match that with their just spam tank destroyers, which to be honest wasn't the worst idea. But they should have complemented it with more combined arms. You saw how the Germans, especially Mashav, but also 47, were really combining their infantry support weapons and tanks in action at the same time, even the artillery from time to time. So, the fact that the Allies really only went for tank destroyers and infantry with a slight amount of support weapons and no medium tanks to speak of, yeah, it wasn't, of course, the best possible outcome. There goes the Viet 5P4, at least. And I'm thinking, yeah, down to 10 points, so we're probably gonna die. But, as always, that's just kind of my opinion. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you soon. Let's try to get the most threatening shot possible. I always like looking at the big tanks at the end. Yes. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Have a nice one.